All right, at this point then, we should have our site back to life. It's um, the same as we left it previously. I'm on the front end, wherever you're at, just so that we're doing the same thing. Visit the front end, like me, visit site, and there's my home page. Remember, one of the things we did was we set a static home page. It's going to say home all the time. We can change it, of course, but it's got a home page. Then on the left side, we've got blog. We have a link for Amazon sales, and then we've got some links for social media, and then some other, some other things over here that we haven't talked about yet, but we will in a moment. And then we've got content on the right, and then proudly powered by WordPress. Leave a reply. Why would someone want to leave a reply on the home page? Well, this is one of the things that's great, and maybe not so great, about WordPress, in that people can comment on your site. That's very good. If it's a blog post, for example, letting people comment on your blog post is useful because it has some value of search engine optimization. So this class is focusing on WordPress and e-commerce, but let's say you go through these two months and you learn all this great stuff and you have a great website, but just because you have a great website doesn't mean people will buy your products, probably because they don't know your website exists. So then there's the whole art and science and magic of SEO, search engine optimization. And I teach that class. Um, I think it's coming up in a month or two. But search engine optimization is a three to four week class where we talk about what are all of the modern techniques, what are the do's and don'ts, what's the advice to do to get our website found by the search engines, by Google, by Bing, by Yahoo. AOL, etc. Search engine optimization. Because if you simply build a website really, really nice and such, that's not enough anymore. Because someone else also has a really nice website selling the same thing that you are. The same product, the same service, the same nonprofit, the same band, the same artist. You know, you might think you're very unique, but there's going to be yet another vegan free, uh, vegan, uh, gluten free, uh, organic dog walking company out there. Um, so, search engine optimization is to get you ahead of the competition. And I teach that class. I have to look it up when the next one's coming up. But one of the aspects of SEO, search engine optimization, that helps you is, to some degree, that people have the ability to comment on your blog. So, number one, that means having a blog is very useful for search engine optimization. And number two, if people have the ability to comment on it, that could help you get traffic because the search engines will see people care about this site. People are commenting and sharing compared to this other site that's the same thing, but there's no activity on it. So commenting and such is useful to some degree. Not on the home page, though. <coughs> Not on the home page, though. You never see that on any, any website, really. You don't see a leave a comment on the home page. You might see leave a comment on a blog post. So we need to make a setting change here. Because notice also, um, if we had like, let's say, an about page, a contact page, those, uh, those pages will most likely also have leave a reply. Why would someone leave a reply on the about page? Why would someone leave a reply on the contact page that's different than send us an email. So I'm going to show you two places where you could fix that and you have to decide how you're going to do this. Both ways could work and I'll show you both ways and then I'll show you the way that we often do it for our, for our clients and then you have to decide which way you like. Let's go back to the dashboard. Just click on the name of your site again. Shortcut to take you back to the dashboard. Let's go Let's hover on, uh, on the settings menu, settings, and then discussion. I believe we saw this previously, and I'll mention it again. Default article settings. Articles mean posts or pages. Posts and pages, remember the difference. Posts are blog posts things that you publish on a regular basis. This, you know, once a week, once a month, once a quarter, whatever, but on a regular basis. Posts. Pages don't change. 
that often and are not created that often. How many contact pages are you going to have? How many about us pages are you going to have? How many home page pages are you going to have? Not really that many. One, probably. So pages are things that don't change too often. Posts are things that change often. Both of them together are articles, default article settings. Allow people to post comments on new articles, which means pages and posts. So having this on will let people right away be able to comment on any new blog post you write. That's useful. I want people to, to comment on my post from this month, and when I make one next month, I want them to write on that one, and the next month, and the next month. But the problem is, that also means that people will be able to comment on my About page, and my Contact page, and my Home page. So if you turn this off, people will not be able to comment on new articles. That still doesn't solve my problem. This is not going to turn off the comment ability on my home page. It's not a new article anymore. It's already been posted. So that's, this is always confusing for people. I would recommend you leave this on, and then I'll show you these settings may be overridden for individual articles. I can turn on or off the ability for people to comment on individual posts or pages. I would then say leave this on because if you wanted people to be able to comment on your posts and you don't turn this on, they won't be able to comment. And then you're going to realize a month later, why don't I have any comments on my posts? Oh, I didn't turn it on. So if you leave this on, people will be able to comment on your posts. But what we then need to do is on individual pages, uh, individual articles, turn it off like this. Let's go to the Pages screen. Click on Pages. You'll see we've got the home page. If you hover, don't click yet, but if you hover your mouse over Home, you will see Edit, Quick Edit, Trash, and View. Same for all of them. When you hover over them, you get those options. Hover over Home and click Quick Edit. Information and Quick Editing, Allow Comments. So on that individual article, the home page, I don't want comments there. doesn't make sense. I want people to comment on my blogs, not the home page. From here, you can also quickly change the date of publication, add a password. This is not as full-featured as having a dedicated plugin that gives you, you know, advanced password protection and all of that. This is a very simple thing that when someone visits a page it'll pop up, please put the password. But there's no there's no system like like on other websites that you've seen that are more powerful. That's with a different plugin. But this is a quick way to create a blog post, let's say, and and then make it password protected so you can sell a subscription to be, to read that blog post. Again, it's not as robust as a real plugin dedicated to that, but it's a quick way to make a post or a page private and with a uh, and or with a password. Uh, order template status, that's fine. Uh, I turned off allow comments. Update. Now go back to visit site, and then you'll see no comments. This edit is only for you because you're logged in. If you were not logged in, it would not say edit because you're you're logged in. You have the ability to edit anything on your site. So uh, we'll do it again uh, later when we create an about page and a contact page and such those will automatically have the comment ability I don't want that so we will have to go in after we create the content page the contact page to turn on comments but we'll do that later
what I want to talk about is notice on the home page on this particular theme that I have we should all have the same theme the 2015 theme it's a basic theme with a sidebar on the left a content area on the right pretty plain design on the left sidebar we have our menu we have a search box recent posts etc etc site admin I don't want that I don't want that when someone visits my site they have a way to log into my site to edit it so the default is that you will have right on the home page a way for someone to log into your site or try to log into your site um, what I want to do then is edit the sidebar Uh, let's let's go to our uh, our dashboard. Hover over appearance, and there's no item here anywhere that will say sidebar. Usually, you'll find this under widgets. So hover over appearance and select widgets. So depending on your theme, you may have different widget areas. Depending on the theme, it'll tell you here, widget area. Add widgets here to appear in your sidebar. Depending on the theme, you might have left widget area, right widget area, and top widget area. This one only has one, and it's on sidebar. Notice it doesn't tell you left or right, it just says it's a sidebar. But these are the things that we saw. If I'm looking at my, my site, if I'm looking at my site, these are the things that are on the sidebar. Search, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, meta. That's what I'm seeing in the sidebar, isn't it? And it might not be quite obvious, but I want to remove this site admin ability. With your guess, which of these widgets might that be? Meta. Because they're right here. Meta, meta, categories, categories, etc. So notice there's a triangle next to meta. Click on it. It pops open to give you a little info, nothing really to edit. There's no way for you to remove individual elements of the meta widget. You can either uh, delete it or, or display it. You can't really customize it too much except for title. You know, you don't have to do this, but if I write something in the title, instead of it saying uh, meta, it'll say what I wrote. But still, uh, I don't want meta. You usually do not want meta. You usually don't want a way for people to, you know, to try to log into your site. Only you want to be able to log into your site. So I'm going to select to delete the meta widget. Click delete. There's no feedback that says, are you sure? It just does it. So now on my home page, there's no more meta. Category is the last item. If you open categories, this has different sorts of settings. Would you like to change the default name instead of categories? You could call it my stuff. And then it'll say my stuff. When we talk about uh, categories. Um, we'll see that these are useful to organize your, po your blog posts and your products. When we get to products, we will have, uh, if we're going to go with this concept of Victor's Bakery, we're going to have product categories of cakes, pies, cookies, you know, different baked goods, categories. So I can display those in the sidebar. 
as a drop-down menu, how many of them are there, hierarchy, etc. Archives of the blog, recent comments. So these, these should make sense relatively what they might be. Recent posts, search, and some of them have more settings than others. Recent posts says how many posts would you like to display? Five. Would you like to display their date? Yes or no? So depending on the widget, you'll get different features. And widgets come from possibly your theme or possibly plugins. So widgets are just these uh, visual extra features to add to your site. Notice we can add from our from the selection here on our left, we can add a calendar. Let's try this. Drag the calendar widget, drag it from the left side, and drag it above search. You're going to get a box, a dotted box. If you don't see a dotted box, you're not putting it in there. See, I'm not putting it in there. You want to make sure you see a dotted box right there. Drag calendar above search. It doesn't really have that many options. Click Save. I'm going to visit site. Notice I have two windows open. Do you know this trick? Uh, I'm going to hover over visit site and I'm not going to click it. I'm going to right click it, open a new window. That way in one window I can have the dashboard to make changes and then in another window I can have the front end so I can see those results. So if you right click, open link in new window, your web browser might call it something slightly different. But this is in a new window. What you click on in the uh, dashboard? I haven't clicked yet. I hovered over and then I right clicked visit site. And then open link in new window. So then I get a new window here with my site. And now I see a calendar above search. This is more of a calendar of uh, blog posts. It's not really a calendar where you can set appointments. It's not kind of a the kind of a calendar where, let's say this is my community, outra community outreach um, uh, blog. It's not a place like that to say, that says, uh, you know, Children's Corner, Saturday the 29th. It's not that kind of calendar where you can set things. This is a calendar where it will show people, there's a blog post written on the 5th. There's two blog posts written on the 17th. There's a blog post on the 29th, and then they can click to view the blog post. It's that kind of calendar. Notice you can't go back, you can't go forward. It's just here. Here's some. Ca here's a calendar of recent posts, and the settings are not. There's no real settings. Just what title would you give it, and nothing else. So I'll say, okay, well, maybe I wanted a maybe I wanted a title, and then it says their blog calendar. Where did you get the calendar? It's right there, calendar. Yeah, these are all widgets. So let's say there's some widgets in our widget area. And if you were to click on a delete, it deletes it, of course. It's gone, the calendar. And if I drag calendar back into widget area, I get a brand new virgin calendar. It's not, it doesn't have my settings anymore. So that's what I'm saying about this delete will delete it. Any customization that you did to the widget is gone once you delete it. You can also drag it back, same sort of thing. 
but that deleted the settings. So now that calendar is completely empty. It doesn't have my customization. And on this, it's not a big deal. But what if I was customizing something like recent posts? What if I wrote something under the title and selected a number of posts and all of this stuff? If I click delete, it's gone. Instead, notice we have widget available widgets, and then we have inactive widgets. Drag widgets here to remove them from the side air, but keep their settings. So it's not obvious here, but if you click on the if you click on the word available widgets, it collapses just so that you don't have all of that that you that gets in your way. If you click available widgets, then you'll see inactive widgets. So instead of deleting this widget calendar or dragging it back to available, that will delete all of its settings. Instead, if you drag it into the inactive widgets area, make sure you've got the dotted box before you drop it. If you drag it to the inactive widgets area, it'll be removed from your sidebar, just like before, but now if I drag it back, it still has my settings, my customization. So this might be better than a delete. Maybe this particular month, for some reason, you don't want to show a search box, but you don't want to lose the customization. There are some widgets that are very complex with a lot of settings, like social media widgets, where you say, this is my Twitter address, this is my Facebook address, this is my Pinterest address. And then for some reason, you need to deactivate it. You don't want to delete that, because then you're going to need to recreate that widget, all of its settings. A better use might be to drag your widgets to the inactive area, and then when you need them, put them back, and all the settings come back. If you wanted recent posts first before search, drag. You see you get the double the four-headed arrow just drag the title recent posts up to search now you now you've changed the order you can change the order however it is you want you can have as many widgets as you want depending on the theme you can have widgets on the left on the top on the right depends on the theme. This one's only got one area, sidebar, particularly on the left. And my particular uh, theme has some widgets built in, and depending on the plugins I've got installed, I have these to choose from. But these are not the only ones. Later on we'll see there's other options too, like I want to add social media buttons. Maybe I want to add my affiliate link ad. Maybe I want to add my Google um, you know, ad, AdSense account or whatever. Um, we have these built-in widgets. They come also from the themes installed and the plugins installed. For example, let's see this one, uh, RSS. <coughs> if someone wants to subscribe to your site via RSS, they can do that. Don't worry about what it is really because it's not really that popular as it used to be. How many of you have heard of RSS before this class? A few people, okay. How many of you have used RSS in the last month? In the last six months? In the last 12 months? See, it's not that popular anymore. RSS basically was an older way of subscribing to a site. So you've heard of the term Web 2.0, perhaps? There was Web 1.0, of course. Web 2.0 is the current kinds of websites, like Facebook and Pinterest, you know, social media, where you visit a site, you comment, you favorite, you make friends, you follow accounts. This is a Web 2.0 site. It's very interactive, back and forth. It's kind of obvious now that, yeah, that's what I do on Facebook, chat with friends and family. It's a Web 2.0 site. Before these kinds of sites, remember back in the days before Pinterest, before Twitter, before Facebook, before MySpace, before um, Friendster, before these social networks, 
web 1.0 sites. You would visit a website once a week, once a month, whatever, to consume its content. But you really wouldn't comment, you wouldn't interact, you would visit the site as necessary. Maybe you had a big row of bookmarks in your web browser and you'd go back to visit the site on a regular basis. A web 1.0 site. In the middle, web 1.5, let's say, was RSS. You visited the site, you subscribed to the site, and you didn't have to come back to visit the site. You'd get a brand new alert in your RSS reader, which might be your, your mail, and it would tell you, new article. Well, that's been superseded by the, by the most current subscription methods, so that's why, in short, don't worry about RSS. Um, it's got a lot of options, but you don't really need them. WordPress on its own has a built-in method for people to subscribe. So it's not a very useful widget anymore. Tag Cloud. These are kind of also rather passe. But a Tag Cloud, have you ever visited a website, especially a blog, and then on the side it's got a jumble of words, and some words are bigger than others, and some words maybe are a different color than another, and you click on one of those words and it shows you all the articles with that keyword. That was a tag cloud. You don't see those as often anymore. They're still around. So what I'm going to show you here actually one of my favorite basic widgets. It, on the first glance it looks like one of the most simplest widgets, but it's actually the most powerful widget. Do you see one called text? Drag text into your sidebar, just maybe at the bottom, wherever, just drag text. And then we get a title and we get a box for text. And then a simple option, automatically add paragraphs. Let's do this. Let's type, this is my text widget title, and just write, this is some text in my widget something. We're going to write something here so I can show you something. Type this and then click Save and then Visit Site. Just type something and then click Save. Visit Site So at the very bottom on the left, that's where I put my widget, at the very bottom, this is my text widget, this is some text in my widget. Okay? Well, it seems very basic. But let me tell you, this is one of the most powerful widgets because in this widget you can write any HTML and CSS. You can write any code. For example, let's do this. Let's, let's update this widget here, this text widget. Let's add to it instead this. Let's write a little bit of HTML code. Um, uh, I'm going to put my cursor at the beginning of the line here, the blinking cursor. And on the keyboard, let's type the less than symbol, which is shift, which is shift comma. You want to type shift comma to get the less than symbol, and then shift period to get the greater than symbol. So less than, greater than. <coughs> inside the, these angle brackets, inside of these symbols, let's type div, this is lowercase, space. Make sure you're inside of the angle brackets, inside of the less than and the greater than. Then we'll write style equals um, quote, that's shift apostrophe, it's next to the enter, it's a quotation symbol. Another quote, 
with style equals quote, end quote. And then inside of the quote, inside of the quotes, go between the quotes there. And we'll write color, colon, pink, semicolon. There's a colon right here, color, colon, pink, for example, semicolon. Save the widget, visit site. This is a little bit of HTML code and CSS code. I wonder what it does. Click Save, visit site, and we'll see what it does. Visit site, and now on my sidebar, when I when I type that, did you get pink text? Raise your hand if you got pink text. Great. There we go, pink text. So all I code was just to cover the pink? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because on a regular website, this is the code of that website right there. 255 lines of code. So what we wrote right there is nothing compared to a whole website. If it worked, you should get pink text. Well, what if I wrote there instead red, or yellow, or purple, or gold? So Orange. So um, you might say, okay, that's a great parlor trick. Sure, but again, this is one of the most powerful widgets because that widget accepts any HTML. If you have, let's say, if you're an affiliate marketer, they're going to say, put this code on your website to make money. There you go. You take the code that they give you and they put it and you put it into a, a text widget and your affiliate code is set up and then you're gonna make money. Um, I'll show you this in a moment. We can get we can put a YouTube video here. There's no widget that says video. But most websites nowadays give you give you something called an embed code. This is a code that will let you embed a video onto your site, a tweet onto your site, a poll, a PowerPoint presentation, embed code. And those embed codes, 99% of the time, they're in HTML. And this box accepts HTML. And it takes the HTML and converts it. Just like it took this code and it made that text orange. Any of those texts. Yes, actually. Like one after the other? Yeah, you can drag another. You can drag another text widget. Yeah, you can have as many of these text widgets. You can have many of these widgets as you want. You can have seven search boxes if you want for some reason. But you can put as many of these text widgets as you want in one box. We'll have one code, and one box will have another. Or you can string them together in one box. That usually also works. But yeah, you can keep them in separate text widgets. So just to play a little bit more, this code here, this is HTML and CSS code, and basically um, here we've, uh, we've edited it so that it looks different. There's no button here to change the color of my text, but if I know the code, I can write my code. Let's add a little bit more here. We have something div, style, color, semicolon. Click right after the semicolon, press a space. This time we'll write background dash color colon and then choose any other color, blue, semicolon. 
who were kind of saying, um, let's change some colors and some design here. Div, this is a division, a division in the design. The style, the look of it, we're going to set it like this. Color, text color, technically, make it orange. Background color, make it blue. Notice the first sort of command is a semicolon, then the next one, semicolon, and then the next one, and the next one. So we can write any amount of code here, hundreds of lines if we wanted. Um, make this change and then remember to click Save, visit site again, maybe refresh it, and look at that. In my case, orange text color, blue background color. And yeah, it seems like a parlor trick at this point, but as you educate yourself in HTML and CSS, these languages of the web, you can do very, very powerful things. And just to show you, let me give you this free website where you can do just that. This is a whole world to, to learn about. If you visit the website w3schools.com, this is a great free website where you'll learn step-by-step -step HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, ASP, all of these web languages. So they have tutorials on that or something? Web tutorials? Exactly. Yes. You're going to learn step-by-step -step tutorials with self-paced quizzes and such. And when you go through the lessons, you, you take an assessment, and then you can get a certificate. You can get certificates on these languages. I'm telling you about this site because when you want to get advanced on WordPress, you might not have you might not have a a widget pre-made for you. You might not have a customized button pre-made for you, but you'll actually always have the ability, as we'll see later, to edit the raw code of anything we want of our site. But that requires the knowledge of HTML, CSS, and sometimes JavaScript and PHP, these huge computer languages. The point is that there's probably going to be a theme that fills your needs. There's probably going to be a plugin that fills your needs. But sometimes one little thing isn't available to you. Someone didn't create a, a, a button for you. Someone didn't give you that ability, but you always have the ability to go to the editor. And with the editor, you can edit any code. Under W3 Schools, this is where you can educate yourself. What's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all of this stuff. And if you have plenty, if you have the time, and you can learn you can all learn. these. Uh, from scratch as a beginner? Yeah. Or do you have to know the regular issue? Nope. nope. These are all uh, basic. Learn all of these languages from the beginning. And a print a certificate is something you have to pay for that or no? Nope. No. The site is, as I said, the site is completely free. Everything here is free and it's very good quality. And what I like about it is it's going to show you step by step. Here's an example. Try it yourself. And then you're going to write code here and see the result here. So you're going to learn, and you're going to do it, and then there's going to be tests right there, quizzes, and get the certificate, and all, and it's free. So I showed you here then a little bit of text, a little bit of code, and I've got you know, this, just this little trick. But let me show you this. We can put a, a YouTube video here. Let me show you that. We, we're going to embed a video onto our, onto our site. There's no, there's no widget that says add video. But we can add a video via the text widget, because it says any arbitrary text or HTML. So I'm going to drag 
another text box here. And under title, I'll just write, uh, watch my video. And what I need then is the, the embed code for a video. Every YouTube video, by default, has this. Unless the person that uploaded deactivated this, every video should have this. Let's uh, open another tab or another window and let's go to YouTube.com. And here, um, I'm going to search for a video at the top. You can, if you know a video that you want to use, go ahead. But I'm just going to search at the top here. How to install WordPress. I'm just going to search for any video. Don't worry, just any video. How to install WordPress. So I'm going to search that. I'm going to skip the ads. How to install WordPress from Learn Web Code. Again, any video doesn't matter. I'm just going to choose the first one here. How to install WordPress. You need to click on a video. It should start to play. Hello, everyone. Welcome to an. And you've all seen YouTube videos before, but have you ever looked down here? There's the video, there's the title, add to share. Every video has this feature on by default unless the uploader turned it off. So look at any video and look below the title you'll see share. Click on share and there'll be share on social media or embed. Click embed. This code is code that we can copy from YouTube and paste into our WordPress widget, our text widget, and it'll display this video right on our site. We don't need to download the video, we don't need to upload the video to our site. Let's try that. Let's look at the embed code. It's found under the share. The share button. You often see this, this kind of icon everywhere. This is supposed to be the share icon. And if you click, it'll first say share on Twitter or Pinterest or whatever but you want embed. This whole line of code, make sure the whole thing is selected. Right click, copy, or control C on the keyboard. Right click, copy, and go back to your widgets, and inside of that box there, after the title, paste. So basically, this is an HTML code, display this, this video, this width and this height, which video, this video right here, allow full screen. Anyway, just paste that in, save it, visit site. And then if you see on your widget area at the very bottom, watch my video. It's a little cut off just because my sidebar is a little small, but we can fix that. But then I click right there, and that video is going to Hello, play everyone. Right Welcome on my to another page. WordPress tutorial. By this point, you're familiar with what WordPress is, it's and perhaps you're convinced that it's worth box. giving a try. So, how can you have your own copy of WordPress to click around in and experiment with? I would well, still you have three primary options. To use Option YouTube. one. I would still recommend for you to upload your videos to YouTube or Vimeo or some video sharing site and then get the embed code. All of these sites, all these Web 2.0 sites nowadays, they've all got some kind of embed code. The reason I recommend that is videos take a lot of space. You're going to buy space on your provider, which we'll talk about later, and then you're going to add videos and more videos and more videos. You're going to run out of space because videos take a lot of space. You're also going to slow down your site because people are visiting your site and everyone's going to want to watch that video and therefore your site is going to give your visitors your video from your site and slow it down. YouTube, powered by Google, 
is super fast, it's global, it has bandwidth to spare, it's running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it has a, an army of engineers making sure it's always running. So if you upload your video to YouTube, for example, you can uh, still embed your own video. And that's what I would recommend because um, it's more efficient. You do have the ability in WordPress to upload a video, but again, if you're going to use up your own resources, might as well use up YouTube's. It's all for free. Is WordPress.com, which I will explain in detail in just a moment. And so here then, I'm just showing you any video on YouTube will have embed turned on unless they turn it off. And this is out of our scope, but if you create a free YouTube account and upload your videos, there's no limit. You can upload as many as you want. No limit. YouTube is running all the time. It's, uh, it's one of the most popular sites in the world. I would recommend you upload your videos here and then embed them on your own site. That's going to be faster. You'd use up less of your resources than if you upload it to your own site, your own account on your own provider. <clears throat> and so uh, I mentioned also another video sharing site. YouTube is the big famous one of course, but there's also Vimeo. Vimeo.com. V-I-M-E-O. What's the difference? The big one is that Vimeo is a little bit more snobbish than YouTube. Um, usually the content on Vimeo is a little bit more professionally produced or with more effort. You're not going to find as many of these shaky handheld videos that you see on YouTube. It's going to be that people actually create a good looking video with good audio and sound and upload it. So again, in a sense, it's a bit more snobbish. There's also a paid version on Vimeo where there's no ads and that sort of thing. Now, YouTube just released a brand new version called YouTube Red, which is also a $9.99 a month thing. Not too many people know about it, so don't worry about it. But just here's another place for you to upload your videos instead of uploading them to your own site upload them to one of these video hosting sites and let them take care of saving the files and storing them and and serving them and the bandwidth and and all of that all of those things Let me show you another hosting site that might be useful for you. Slideshare.net. Slideshare.net. Um, this is like the YouTube of PowerPoint. If you make a PowerPoint presentation, you can upload it here. Uh, and I'm showing you YouTube and Vimeo and SlideShare and one more in a moment. I'm showing you those to think about social media because social media is an aspect of search engine optimization. You're going to build this great e-commerce website in part one and part two. You're also going to think about adding a blog to your site because that helps your SEO. And you're also going to think about social media because that helps your SEO. If you have followers on Facebook, if you have likes on Twitter, if you have views on YouTube, if you have subscribers on SlideShare, that's potential, potentially more traffic back to your website. More traffic um, to your website, Google sees that, Bing sees that, Yahoo sees that, therefore they could rank you higher than your competitors that don't have any presence on social media. So here you might think about, uh, about it in one term about I'm going to upload my PowerPoint presentation so that it doesn't take up space on my own website and embed it. Sure, because you could do the same thing here. This, this one, 
why I want to work in a call center. Let's say, uh, or five essential marketing workflows. Let's say I want to add that to my website. Um, if you click on that little arrow on these slide, on these PowerPoints, embed. There's the code to embed. Uh, the presentation onto your site. And so it serves the purpose again of um, it serves the purpose of saving your bandwidth and such. But 3,000 views, 849 views, 23,000 views. People visit these sites, people subscribe, people comment, people like, and that gets them traffic. And SlideShare has become so big, LinkedIn bought them. I think this year, maybe last year. LinkedIn paid, I don't know, hundreds of millions of dollars for this company. And so LinkedIn and SlideShare, they're integrated. And therefore, social media. Uh, think about it in this term. Make a PowerPoint presentation about something related to your business. Put it here for free. You could then be getting views on your PowerPoint and traffic back to your website where then you will sell a version of it with more content. Maybe this is the free preview. They want the full one. You know, they can click and somewhere here it'll you'll have here. F click on our site to buy the full version. So you'll see some embed code somewhere also to embed to embed this on your site. The point is you're also going to put it into a text widget and then that'll be added to your site. Did you also do a was it an elevator pitch of yourself? Do a video yourself? And put it on there? Would that be something you could use or that's not what you use for? On SlideShare or YouTube? Oh, slide here. Does it send LinkedIn? Sure. Networking? Sure, but. Um, Have you seen that at all? Or? Not as much, no. Mm -hmm. I usually see much more direct things like 30 lessons here, how to brand your business, mm -hmm. the writing and telling. It's not really like an elevator pitch or sort of like selling yourself a resume kind right, of thing. Right. You kind of sneak that in by posting things that are useful like this, like an infographic or a top five, you know, top five WordPress plugins, and then at the end in there somewhere you say, plus we're available to be hired. That sort of thing. Not not so obviously selling yourself, but giving something away for free. Yes. Did you do the same thing for I know it's it connects to LinkedIn if you had like a portfolio? Like a design portfolio more? Well again, that's a little bit more in terms of you know, why would a potential uh, customer care? They might, they might be browsing SlideShare to look for portfolios, but probably they're going to be on a portfolio site like Behance or Dribbble, you know, other sites about portfolios. This is a bit more about, like if I go over here to en environment, I'm going to see a bunch of things about, you know, natural vegetation and wildlife of India, uh, the world in 60 seconds how to this, how to that. So it's a bit more informational rather than look at me. It's like here's something here's something for you rather than look at me. There's other websites for that. I'll show you one more social network that might be useful to you uh, and then we'll take a break. I showed you a couple of video networks, YouTube and Vimeo. I showed you one about presentations slide share. And here's one about sound. Soundcloud.com. This is the this is the uh, audio this is the YouTube of audio. What this is about is if you've got a band, you can upload your tracks here. What about if you're doing a podcast? Upload your, your episodes here. Um, you can put your portfolio of, of music here. Uh, what if you're doing uh, recorded interviews? Uh, so let's think about it in terms of, I've got this website, Victor's Bakery. And once in a while, 
I'm going to record a podcast. If you don't know what a podcast is, a podcast is basically it's internet radio episodes on a series. Uh, has anyone heard of the um, the serial podcast on NPR? Um, that's one of the famous podcasts at the moment. Basically, it's a radio show. It's out on a regular basis and such. Uh, podcasts are not live. You download them. You listen to them on the go, in the car, etc. But here's a place where you then can upload your podcast, your interviews, your how-tos. Maybe you have a how to uh, how to bake a cake podcast, and uh, you upload to SoundCloud. And again, you'll also see. So I'm just going to look here. Search. Uh, I don't know, let's see what comes up here. WordPress. All in one SEO WordPress plugin complete tutorial. So um, someone uploaded a tutorial on this particular plugin. You can hear that for free or something about buy. But then we've got share. And all of these tracks also will have some sort of share. Embed. And so this will embed this sound file onto the website. Think about it in terms of how it's useful for you. You're creating, you're creating these audio, these these episodes. You're uploading them to SoundCloud. It's very popular. People are are, are listening, subscribing, and that could also drive more traffic back to your website. So those are some social networks I wanted to mention, and that's a bit of a plug for my social media class. Mm -hmm. I teach a two-part class on social media where we go into detail on how to set up. If you don't have any of these profiles, we'll set them up. If you already have the profiles, we'll, we'll learn how to use them. But usually we talk about in-depth uh, about Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, and a couple of others. And uh, I have to look up when it's when it's coming up next time, but that's another class, two-part class, two-month class that I teach on social media. Because you build a great website, you're not getting any traffic because you haven't engaged in SEO. Part of SEO is social media. And so I teach a class on that. And it's all related to each other. And uh, that just stemmed from the idea of this text widget being very powerful in that you can add any code, embed code, for example. And so we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk about a few more things um, in our basic WordPress class. Any general questions? I have a question. Is this your SoundCloud uses cookie space? Uh, when you visit a website, it might save a cookie onto your computer, which is a little tracking file. Uh, you might think that sounds that sounds insidious, but let's say you you set a setting here, such as don't show me these kinds of sounds. Well, it needs to know not to show you that next time. So it saved a cookie onto your computer that says don't show these sounds. Maybe you logged in. And so that when you come back to it, you don't have to log in again, it saved a cookie. So cookies can be about that, saving information to make things easier for you. Now cookies also can be uh, for marketing. Have you ever visited websites and then you go on Facebook or, or Amazon or whatever and suddenly it's saying, why don't you buy this, why don't you buy that? Because it saw that you were visiting websites on a certain topic. So those websites read those cookies and want to sell you something that it thinks you might want. So cookies are for both of those aspects, to make using a site easier and to sell you something. That's why it's telling you we're using cookies here. If you don't like that, 
don't use so our site. Retargeting is retargeting. That's uh yeah, that's targeting. A form, of a form of marketing, yeah. By using our service, you're agreeing to the updated policy. Basically, if you don't agree to these cookies, don't use the website or use private browsing on your computer. Um, so let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk more about uh, WordPress. It's 2.46. We'll be back at 2.57, uh, and we'll go on. <laughs>